Hey guys, it's Toby, and we're going to be building a gaming PC for £1,000. Let's go! Alright, first of all we have an Intel Core i5-4670K. This is a quad-core processor clocked at 3.4GHz. Now, this is arguably one of the best processors in the world in terms of price to performance. You get exceptional value for your money here. It's only £170 at the moment at the time of making the video, and you get incredible, incredible performance from this CPU. Now, it's quad-core and doesn't have hyper-threading like the i7-4770K, but the four cores will perform exceptionally well considering they're clocked at 3.4GHz. When you're gaming and playing anything that's CPU intensive, such as Metro Last Light or any other kind of um, CPU intensive game, it will perform exceptionally well and give you great performance. Also, if you're ever doing anything like video editing, rendering, uh, 3D graphics, any, any of that kind of stuff, it will perform exceptionally well in that too. As well as this, the core clock is 3.4 GHz, however that can be boosted up to 3.8 with Intel Turbo Boost technology. What this means is that straight from the BIOS you can easily just click a button and it will be 3.8 GHz. Since you can push it to 3.8, we can probably overclock to much more than that. You can probably hit about 4.2, 4.3 without any problem at all. And since we're going to be overclocking, we're going to be moving on to our CPU cooler, which will be the Noctua NHD14. Now this is quite a large CPU cooler but it gets the job done. It rivals most water cooling solutions such as the H100i from Corsair. Uh, this is not going to give you that kind of performance but it's going to perform really well anyway. It's got a triple fan kind of design where you have to put three fans in, one in the side, one in the middle and one in the other side. It's large but it gets the job done and it will keep your CPU cool when you're overclocking to like 4.2 or 4.3 GHz. Moving on to the motherboard we're going to get an Asus Z87-Pro. This is one of the best motherboards in the world right now. It's got all of the connectivity you ever need. It's got 6 SATA 3.0 ports, which means you can get that 6 gigabits per second transfer rate. It's got two PCI X16 slots, which means you can run graphics cards in Crossfire and SLI if you plan on doing that in the future. This motherboard comes with Wi-Fi, so you're going to get 802.11n support. You're not going to get AC support at the moment because no um, Socket 1150 motherboard supports this apart from really expensive ones. Uh, you have Bluetooth 4.0, which means you can connect your phone or like any other Bluetooth device. You have four USB 3.0 ports and you have eight USB 2.0 ports, which means this motherboard will have a lot of space for your USB keys and anything like that, USB keyboards. It comes with a whole load of Asus branded controls and stuff for the motherboard itself. The main one you'll probably use is probably Fan Expert Pro. And what this means is that you can just essentially customize the way the fans are spinning, what speed they're going to be spinning at, whether you want to max them out or not. You can change the airflow in the case with this and make one fan blow in and the other one blow out or the other way around. And you can control the CPU cooler. It's got support for 32 gigs of DDR3 memory and coming onto the RAM we're going to be using 8 gigs of Corsair Vengeance. It's clocked at 1600 MHz and you're getting two sticks of four here. 1600 MHz is the most the motherboard supports without overclocking, so going with 1600 MHz RAM here makes sense. 8 gigs of RAM is usually enough for everything that you do, like gaming, if you're ever doing like editing and stuff, if you need more RAM, you can always throw in two sticks more to give you 16 gigs. Coming on to the graphics cards, we're going to be using an Asus GTX 780. This is one of the best cards in the world right now, it's got 3 gigs of GDDR5 which should be more than enough for your games. If you're ever playing anything that's RAM intensive such as like Skyrim with a whole load of mods and texture packs, the 3 gigs of GDDR5 will be enough in most cases. Um, again, you can throw any game at this and it will handle it exceptionally well. You know, Battlefield 4 will run at 1080p 60fps constantly without any problems at all. You can probably play at 1440p at 16fps without any problems at all either. Uh, Minecraft, DayZ, Rust, all of those games as well. Just remember when you're playing early access games such as DayZ that the games are still in development and any problems you might encounter are not necessarily due to the graphics card, it's due to the coding. An alternative to the GTX 780 is the AMD R9 290X. Again, it will give you exceptional, exceptional performance. Both of these graphics cards actually support 4K. Uh, the only main difference is here is that the R9 290X will support Mantle, whereas the NVIDIA card will support G-Sync. Also another difference here is that the R9 290X will have 4 gigs of GDDR5 compared to the GTX 780 which only has 3 gigs. but again that doesn't really make much of a difference unless you're playing games with a lot of texture packs and a lot of RAM intensive stuff. Just a word of warning here that the R9 290X is fluctuating in price and it's rather difficult to find as you can see there's only one left in stock here. If you can find one that's great but make sure you get one with a custom cooling unit onto it because the standard R9 290X gets incredibly hot. Make sure you find one with a custom cooler on it. Coming onto the hard drive we're going to be using a 1TB Western Digital Caviar Blue. 
Again, this should be more than enough for your games, videos, music, etc, whatever you want to put in it. If you ever need more storage, you can get a 2TB version, or if you need less, you can get a 500GB version without any problems at all. The price range is usually about 50 to about £30, depending on the size that you buy. If you already have a hard drive laying around from one of your previous builds, you can get an SSD instead. The one we have here is from SanDisk, it's 64GB, because that's in the same price range as the 1TB hard drive. You can get an SSD with more space if you want, but as you increase the space on the SSD, the price gets extremely expensive. Maybe next year we'll see the prices go down for SSDs. The main thing here is that if you actually use an SSD, you can actually put your operating system on it and it will start up really quickly and close out really quickly. Also, if you're opening games which are on your SSD, they will start up incredibly quickly. They're not going to give you an FPS boost, but they'll start up really quickly and close out really quickly. Coming on to the power supply, we're going to be using a Corsair CX750. This is a 750 watt power supply. And it's not modular because the modular version of this is going to be out of stock considering there's only two left But this shouldn't be a problem at all It's going to be more than enough for our build and for any future upgrades such as if you throw in an i7, a 4770k Or you know upgrade a graphics card, throw in more RAM 750 watts is going to be more than enough Also it's 80 plus bronze certified which means you're going to get clean and efficient power And finally coming under the case we have an Antec 302 MIDI tower case this is a ATX case which means it will support our motherboard, it's rather large so it will support our CPU cooler as well, also you can mount a fan on the side so that can give you increased airflow. Um, overall it's just a nicely designed case, it will fit everything nicely, even though our power supply is not modular there's a lot of room for cable management so that's fine. And yeah, this looks really nice and it's only £55 and you can't really go wrong. And yeah, that's it guys, thanks for listening, leave us a like if you liked this video, leave us some feedback down below in the comments, check out the links in the description for more. If you're planning on buying any or all of the components, please use our links in the description as it really, really helps us grow, I can't stress that enough. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you next time.